As we move closer to the 2024 elections, the role that dark money plays in getting votes is a growing question. Scott Thuman follows the money on the impact of this type of campaign cash and who's getting the most. I can't think of any other politician in history who has shown such a disrespect and a contempt for the Constitution and the rule of law as Hillary. The term dark money appeared after a group called Citizens United wanted to promote this film, critical of Hillary Clinton when she ran for president in 2008. The Federal Election Commission said that would violate a long-standing ban on corporate money used to promote or oppose candidates during election season. But in 2010, the Supreme Court disagreed, ruling outside groups and corporations can spend unlimited amounts on elections. What makes this money dark is that those groups don't have to disclose the names of all their donors like candidates and campaigns do. And at the time, it only meant a narrow type of nonprofit called the 501c4, which is things like National Rifle Association, League of Conservation Voters. Scott Walter is president of the Capital Research Center, a conservative think tank tracking how dark money spending has evolved since 2010. It's now broadened in, in a sort of fairly fuzzy way to mean political money where the original donor is not disclosed. Since 2010, the amount of dark money has grown quickly. About $1 billion was spent in the 2020 election. But when it comes to which side of the political aisle attracts the most of that kind of cash, you may be surprised. In those first few cycles after the 2010 court decision, 2012, 2014, 2016, the amount of money in this channel of political giving did increase dramatically. And, and for those cycles, there was an advantage on the Republican side. In 2018 cycle, 2020 cycle, 2022 cycle, there's been lots more dark money on the Democrat side, and that isn't reported as well. Why do you say Democrats have such a big advantage? The Democrat advantage in dark money, of course, stems from the fact that they are now the party of the rich and privileged. Uh, we've looked, for instance, at personal donations in the richest neighborhoods around New York, D.C., L.A., and San Francisco, the richest and most powerful cities in America, and surprise, they go to Democrats. Or if you think of the rich and privileged as being Fortune 500 corporations, well, They've now gone woke. They now give money more to left-wing causes. According to the nonprofit group Open Secrets that tracks political spending, in the 2020 election, four of the top five dark money groups were Democrat-aligned. But you can influence a lot of minds with that kind of money, can't you? Well, it is true that folks who are fighting, you know, for or against particular Supreme Court nominations or for or against particular environmental regulations, you know, a lot of that fighting does happen um, in this world. That's true. You talked about the 2020 presidential cycle. What are we seeing so far for this race? Well, there's a lot less money that's been revealed so far since we're at this point only a little past halfway. In general, in uh, 2022 and the cycle and the current cycle, there doesn't seem to be as much money going into the original dark money 501c4 groups. Do you think voters should know exactly where that money is coming from before they cast their ballots? I sympathize with people who like to hear the phrase, oh, well, you know, we have a right to know where the, uh, everybody's money is coming from. And we do for the vast bulk of dollars that are given to parties and candidates and traditional PACs, that is disclosed. But at the same time, you know, I think about a pro-abortion woman in the Bible Belt. Should her neighbors be able to know that she gave to Planned Parenthood or the reverse? I think that citizens like that have a right to be able to engage in the political process without having to worry about a mob showing up at their door or losing their job, which, as we know, has happened many times. As for the effect of dark money on politics, Walter thinks it isn't as powerful as many believe, pointing out that in terms of total campaign spending, it's still just a small part. For Full Measure, I'm Scott Thuman in Washington.